Thank you for having me. As uh, they introduced me a little bit earlier, I'm Bob Warren. I uh, am a deputy metro editor for the Times Picayune, the New Orleans advocate. I uh, work out of the office in New Orleans now, but have a, a long history here in St. Tammany Parish, where I worked um, in the North Shore office uh, for quite a number of years. So Pat Brister will start us off, and uh, we'll begin with the question here on growth. The population of St. Tammany Parish is nearing 260,000 people and has grown about 17,500 people just in the last five years. Do you have a comprehensive plan for sustainable growth that can be published so the community can know and, and, and see what it clearly states, how the parish can attract and retain businesses while keeping what makes St. Tammany a desirable community? Yes, we do. Um, we have a wonderful um, public information office, and we put that information out. Uh, our growth has been phenomenal. I think we're, we're closer to 260,000 now, and the census will give us another boost, I think, when we get those numbers. As we all know, we started catching up because the growth came so quickly after Katrina that we were still catching up, and the growth has not slowed that much. Obviously, the, the most important thing are our are, are infrastructure issues. I have, I'm very proud to say that I worked diligently to get funding for the interstate, I-12, the, the, uh, over the Tefuncta River from 190 to 21. That has been one of our most dangerous areas. Um, we went to DC and fought hard to get a 25 million grant that we have that money in hand and which should start that next week. And I will tell you today that we have received word that we will be getting the money for the next phase. That'll be a $50 million. That will go from 190 to 59. And I'm looking for the funds to go from uh, 21 west to 1077. So those are the projects that we have to do just to get the people moving from place to place. We, and believe me, you hear a lot about those on our website and in, our, in the media because we're very proud of what we've been able to do with, with the uh, employees that we have to get those grants and get that work going in addition to all the drainage work and our two cent sales tax that's dedicated to our parish roads and drainage in addition to that uh, uh, other money. Well, I hope to build upon the comprehensive plan that may be in place now for the parish. Uh, before I left the city of Covington as mayor, we put money in the budget to update the city of Covington's comprehensive plan and the RFP was put out earlier this year and a consultant was selected to perform a comprehensive plan for the city of Covington. On the Paris level, absolutely, we need to better plan for our infrastructure, for transportation, drainage, highways and roadways so that we can move people around our Paris safely and efficiently. We also need to better plan for development so that we're not experiencing the same problems that we're facing today with regard to drainage, failing at infrastructure, and the like. I believe a comprehensive plan is certainly due for an update in St. Tammany Parish. Growth has outpaced infrastructure in the parish. Traffic congestion across the parish should the parish consider taking over state roads to provide more flexibility and uniformity in local decision making? What are the top three road and infrastructure projects that the parish currently has and how would you address infrastructure issues if you are elected? Okay, those were several questions <laughs> in one sentence, but it all has to do with infrastructure and the, the trade-off of state highways. The city of Covington was one of the first to do a trade with the state for Columbia Street in downtown Covington. In exchange for the city taking over Columbia Street, the state gave us a credit towards making improvements in other parts of our city, and it has worked out great for us. I know that the parish has done so as well, Bootlegger Road being one of those particular projects. There's, a, there's pros and cons for doing that. I think each 
highway, each roadway has to be taken into consideration based on its own merits. Uh, with the Bootlegger Road project, it also included a bridge that is now under construction, and that takes additional capital to make those improvements, which is now a local road. Uh, but I do believe it should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis to taking roads in to parish maintenance in order to receive a credit for future improvements. So we have been a part of the state road swap also. We've had uh, several roads that we've swapped uh, and we get the credit or, or work done on uh, access roads to those roads. I don't think it's practical for us to go uh, much further than we have. We don't have the revenue stream to maintain all of those roads. That won't stop us from having to send our sales tax to the state. We still have to do that. So we're still left with only two cents sales tax to do all the work that we need to do. So I think we have to be very careful in taking in more roads than we can maintain. I think a better idea would be to work the relationships that we have with the state and federal government to make sure our highways get the attention that we need. We're the fastest growing parish in the state. We need to maintain those roads and we need to communicate that with our, our state legislature. And there's some of them here today and we do that constantly. We have met with a DOTD, Dr. Um, uh, Sean, Wilson several times on many issues and I think one part of the question was what are some of the uh, projects that we will be doing so in addition to the 190 which you have seen the state has paid for the parish will be doing roundabouts on several roads and that has proven to move more traffic uh, faster and we also always look for bypass roads and that is to take some of the capacity off of the interstate system or the state highways. We have two right now that are on the books and looking for a third. So we will continue to look for alternatives, but I think it would be not the smartest idea for us to start taking in a lot of the state highways. We can't afford it. Okay. Recent surveys uh, from St. Tammany Corporation show that um, quality of life and crime are issues that usually generate favorable responses from people being surveyed. Um, local permitting processes and regulatory processes are, are usually not, not quite so favorably seen. Some municipalities have recently enacted moratoriums on development, which stems in part from a lack of a regional plan to address infrastructure and drainage issues. What is your position on the moratorium issue and related to that, what is your position on the recent draft ordinance for revising the parish comprehensive development code? First on the moratorium, I think it's very important when you place a moratorium any place that you have a, a time frame. You only place moratoria on areas that have a major problem. The reason you do that is to give you some time to try to find a solution to the problem that growth is causing in that area. We have admittedly had faster growth, growth than any other parish, so it takes catch up time. So that's how I believe moratoria should be used not as a long-term year after year renewal, but find the solution that you need while you have that moratorium. So that gives you time to get infrastructure in place before you build more. I, th I think many of our codes need to be revisited. Some are more extreme than others, necessarily so, because we have had some flooding. We, in the prior years, long before we were all here and in office, we pretty much built wherever. It didn't, it didn't really matter that it flooded so much. We didn't know that it flooded as much as it did. So we, we now know that we need stricter building regulations to keep our homeowners and builders from going into areas that do flood. And we don't have the infrastructure to take care of that. So I think uh, that is true, that we do need to look at those, we, and we have done that. The council has had many, many public meetings on that specific uh, issue and have heard from many different sides. Uh, I think that it, it, if it passes at the next council meeting, it will, we will see how that works and go forward from there. 
Well, we do have a moratorium on the west side of St. Tammany Parish. I don't know of any municipalities that currently have a, a moratorium. And it is specifically for the reason that was mentioned. Too much growth, not enough infrastructure to handle traffic. The utilities may be inadequate. It's time to take a pause and study the regulations that may be able to turn around and get these projects back on board. However, I'm, I'm fearing that there may be more calls for moratorium or calls for pause in the building industry, which would be detrimental to our builders, detrimental to our developers. I believe we've got to get everybody at the table to discuss and come up with solutions to make development smarter, make development in areas where properties should be developed and work with to come with solutions so that we can avoid further moratoriums in the future. There are steps being taken, and I was at a meeting that Councilman Lorino was chairing. They are absolutely discussing ways to enhance the drainage standards that are currently in place and to the stricter sense and not to the more lenient sense. And this is just one step in reviewing the development code that needs to be taken in order to provide better development, safer development, and given our residents and people who move to St. Tammany the homes and properties that they expect. Tax initiatives have been a controversial issue in the, the parish over the past several years, some not faring so well, others doing a little bit better at the, uh, at the polls. Um, the Bureau of Governmental Research has stated in policy analysis that if a taxing authority seeks to impose a tax, the authority should transparently justify to taxpayers why it's necessary and uh, spell out how the tax money is going to be spent. Without such a plan, voters do not have confidence that taxing proposals are necessary. If elected, do you commit to keep tax and millage levels at their current amounts? And if not, do you commit to full transparency in justifying the need for additional taxes? I'm going to revert again to the last eight years that I've been in office. We have renewed several millages and sales tax initiatives overwhelmingly in the city of Covington because the citizens knew what the mayor and city council were proposing on their behalf and they were approved. I believe that our citizens need to have public trust in our leaders in order to move to, to approve the millages that are needed or the revenue that is needed. And it is up to the administration to clearly define what the money will be used for so that the citizens are apt to vote for those needs. As parish president, I will continue to be transparent and show the needs or what needs may be needed to provide for the services that St. Tammany Parish needs whether it be on the website, whether it be through social media or public meetings with business groups, homeowner groups, we will clearly define what the needs are before putting a measure on the ballot. And I will also say that before putting a measure on the ballot, particularly a renewal, I will make sure that the proposition includes only what money is needed to move forward so that the citizens are paying for needs in the future. So I, I think this question uh, comes from our um, trying to get a renewal of a sales tax to support the Justice Center, the jail, the DA's office, and the judges. I don't know uh, how we could have been more transparent in why we needed that money. We were out on 
uh, in every neighborhood. We were on every media source that we could find. And I have been asked, why would you have gone out for a third time? Well, first, the law says you can for a renewal. And after the first time, I thought, well, let me ask everyone what they thought. So they thought that that renewal maybe should have been for a shorter period of time instead of 20 years, 10 years, and maybe a little less. So we went back and looked at everything. We said, okay, so we'll go out the second time, and it will be shorter. And we cut some of the long-term maintenance to make it more affordable. So we cut from, from uh, one, thir one, one, half, one quarter of one cent to one-fifth of one cent for the jail and the same for the Justice Center. So thinking that's all, we couldn't give any more information than that. It failed a second time. And the third time I, I had not said forcefully enough, what will happen if these taxes are not renewed? Well, we told everyone what would happen if they were not renewed and it has come to pass. 20% of our staff was cut. Uh, we are continuing to perform the services that we need to do, to do in this parish, and it's our job to do, but you all have found, I think, that it takes a little more time. When you're 20% lower in staff, you don't get the work done as quickly. So we've made those adjustments that we had to make. We cut $25 million out of our budget, which was required of us to do, because we have to have a balanced budget but we have no undedicated money now. There is not one penny that is undedicated in our budget. So when something does come up that we may need, then we will have to cut again because those were not renewed. I don't know how we could have gotten the information out any more than we did. And I, yes, if, if there is another, if there is something else needed in this parish that we need to go out for a tax, or we will go out and we are transparent. We have a transparency portal on our, that puts everything on our computer. I hope we don't have to, but you can never say never because we, don't know, we know the growth in this parish and we know the services are increasing. Thank you. Um, we're going to ask you to, to look into the crystal ball here, but not to go too far into the future. Um, if, if you uh, are elected to this post in October, um, what will you have accomplished by 2021? That'll only be one year into the next administration. Um, there's one thing I learned very quickly when I went from, from bus the business world to the government world. Nothing is done very, very quickly. So in one year, you certainly can plan uh, what you want to do. We have started some initiatives that we will continue, and I think that's the most important thing. Certainly, uh, one of them is safe haven. When Governor Jindal was going to close that hospital, we found a way, we were determined and relentless to find a way, and thanks to Senator Donahue for helping us with that, to, to buy that whole campus because we knew that the opioid epidemic, the um, mental health issues were growing, and we could not afford to lose that. So that was an initiative we started. We we're building on that every month we add one more thing. So that's something that I will continue and it will grow. Family Promise will be out there now, which is another wonderful uh, program for homeless, homeless people. The other thing that I, I'm so happy that we have done, and that is the transparency portal that I mentioned before. We want to continue that and add to that. You can see everything we do, including a checkbook. Every check we write is in that transparency portal, so you can look at that. Uh, transportation, certainly, we will continue that, but I have to find the money for that third phase of the interstate, uh, so I will be doing that in the first year. Okay. Of course, one of the first things I'd like to initiate, and I mentioned it before, is to address and study our building and development codes. It's not gonna take, it won't be done in one year, but I want to include developers, builders, landowners, elected officials, and all who may be interested in resolving the problems that we're having now with continued flooding. We're, we're experiencing rains and, and weather conditions like we've never experienced before, 
and we're building and building and building, not taking that in consideration. And I think initiating that soon after taking office is a priority of mine. Also, we'll meet with business owners and citizens around our community to find out what their needs are. Uh, as I go around the parish now, I'm hearing so many different uh, ideas and suggestions of how parish government can serve, can serve them better. And I want to continue to be out in the community, as I have for the past eight years as an elected official, to hear the concerns and get ideas from our citizens. And finally, and one of the most important things is, I know the parish is working on a transportation plan, a major transportation and thoroughfare plan. I've seen it. I've helped work on that plan. I want to see that plan come to fruition if it hasn't done so already and bring it to the council and get public input from the landowners and from citizens and adopt a master thoroughfare plan, a master transportation plan that will show east-west corridors, that will show adding capacity to our existing roadways, increasing our infrastructure, transportation infrastructure is of utmost importance and completing this plan and bringing it to the parish council for adoption is critical and I ask for your support of that. Thank you. Um, this is one where the candidates get to ask each other a question and um, the, the person asking the question gets one minute to ask their question and then the uh, person who's responding has two minutes to, uh, to answer that question. So, uh, Mr. Cooper, if you could start us off, please. In anticipation of uh, some of the things we talked about already, uh, I wanted to get an elaboration. With the failure of the three attempts, to renew the sales taxes for the operation and maintenance of the Justice Center and jail, services and people have been cut. But you say that you have streamlined parish government while maintaining a high level of service. Are you currently using reserves or revenue in the fund balances that may soon run out to fund recurring operational expenses resulting in the parish not having a sustainable budget to operate efficiently in 2020 and beyond. So uh, the question is, yes, we are using our uh, reserves. We had been very uh, judicious in building our, our funds just for a reason like this, we had not anticipated the tax not being renewed, but other things can happen. So we had very healthy fund balances in all of our funds. We will never get below the required fund balance. That won't happen. But yes, we did cut $25 million out of the budget because that's what we had to do. We found ways to get the services to our citizens without having to, to totally decimate, decim, decimate our, our um, staff. We cut as many as we thought we could get by and still do the services. There may, be a, there may come a time that we would have to cut that too, but I don't believe that will happen. I think the people in St. Tammany Parish understand we have mandated costs that we have to pay for the jail and the justice center. We talk with uh, the sheriff constantly about his budget and how he, he can help us with that budget and not make us go into those funds anymore. But it's just a matter of fact. When you run out of money, you do have to have some way of replacing it. And that could be, it could be asking for that tax to be replaced again. I'm not saying it will, Many things have happened. I do know that the um, sheriff has talked about maybe he would like to get his own tax passed. And I think that would be wonderful and not have to depend on the parish uh, to fund that. But that had to come out of our general fund. We had no, no options. We used that money. We're using a very small amount and we know it will go 
several years before we run out of that general fund, uh, our uh, fund money, our fund balance money. So I think that answered. I had another question, but I'm going to change it. So, Mr. Cooper, tell me what you would do if a, a tax was not renewed and you had to come up with money to pay for the services that citizens deserve and we want to give them. So how would you cut, how, what would you do to make up that $25 million that, or $12 million a year that we've had to do? That's a very good question. <laughs> What I would have done before the first proposition was put on the ballot, I would have determined that the funds for constructing a new parish jail and the funds for constructing a new St. Tammany Parish Justice Center could have been eliminated from that proposition so that the proposition put before the public would have been for maintenance and operation only. By, that would have been the time to streamline as opposed to streamlining after three sales tax renewal failures. I would not have put myself in a position to be uh, in the position that the parish is in right now because I would have handled it a different way to the public, providing what, what monies are actually needed at that time. I, I do have to have a rebuttal on that, by the way. <laughs> There's no way that you would have known beforehand that those would pass or not pass, so I think your answer just was not a realistic answer just assuming that I could get that passed where you couldn't do it because you did it wrong. I think you've got to have a little more thought than that. No, this is the thought, and I've said this before. Streamlining comes at the time when renewals are considered to be put on the ballot, whether it be a millage renewal or a sales tax renewal. If you don't need the exact same amount of money at that point, Streamlining should have been considered, and perhaps the first time out the gate, providing a sales tax renewal that covered operation and maintenance only would have made the parish government a hero in saving money and, and allowing a tax to be passed on the first round. And that's exactly what we did, and it still failed. Okay. This is the, uh, the two lightning round questions, and these are just after that one. This is a good time for a simple yes, and, yes or no um, answer. Do you think St. Tammany Parish should have an office of Inspector General? No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cooper? No. All right. Now on to Mr. Cooper here. Does transparency in the parish budget and how funds are committed and spent need to be improved? I just received a press release saying that yes. they, are, they are now having a transparent budget. They're yes, be, now being transparent. Do they need to be improved? There's always room for improvement. Yes. That's, that's a long yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Same question for Ms. Brister. Of course, it always should be uh, transparent. And that's what we've spent the last two years doing exactly that. It has always, I'm going to take longer too, it has always <laughs> been different in different parts of our budget. We have now combined those in one spot. You go to one spot and you can see everything that we're doing. So that takes a little time and we did that. These are some of the questions that were gathered up from the audience. Have you considered another bridge over the river next to I-12 to relieve traffic during the construction of new lanes for I-12? Uh, not specific for that reason. There is a plan out there that is a bridge connecting 22 to the interstate, which I think uh, it's, the cost is exorbitant. Building an, a temporary bridge would not, I believe, uh, be inexpensive, and I don't think we could spend that money 
the, the way they're going to, the plans I have seen, the, the bridges over the Chifuncta, they will, will not close the bridges. They will build on the bridge that's already there, just build an additional lane with barriers that you can't get into the lane that they're building. So I, I know it will be slower, but they will not be closing any of the bridges. Okay. I believe we have to move forward with improving I-12 from Slidell to the parish line uh, at Bidico, which will include adding bridge lanes, adding lanes on the bridges, the existing bridges. Uh, I know some, pro some progress has been made for that. Uh, the state and federal government meant to bring the two lines from Slidell to Bidico and meet in, in St. Tammany. However, through, through the works of President Brister and myself at the Regional Planning Commission, that project has been moved forward. And that's why that, uh, the project is moving forward now. But absolutely, an additional bridge lane is needed in both directions to help alleviate traffic and provide safety. Okay. Uh, next question, and we'll, uh, we'll start with Mr. Cooper first on this one. What single accomplishment as mayor of Covington are you most proud of for your citizens? I'm most proud of taking uh, the city of Covington eight years ago that was dormant in downtown Covington, uh, had a workforce that was uh, not cohesive and working uh, with momentum and cohesiveness and taking a budget and stopping the spiraling of, uh, of using the fund balance to provide balanced budgets each and every year to provide a workforce that has now been recognized five years in a row as a top workplace to work and leaving the city two months ago in the hands of new mayor Mark Johnson with a budget that is uh, intact, sound fiscal management, and a thriving downtown and city. So doing all that and making all of the improvements within the budget, within the revenues afforded to the city of Covington, was able to do that without raising taxes. Okay. Uh, this one now for uh, Ms. Brister. What single accomplishment as parish president um, are you most proud of for the citizens of the parish? I can't answer that. There's two. I just can't pick one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat a little. Certainly safe haven, as I mentioned before. That is so badly needed, and it has come to be nationally recognized as a model that the White House czar has come down to look at that he wants to carry throughout the country because we're doing it right. That, that makes me as proud as anything because our opioid epidemic, our mental health issues are growing, not only in this parish, but in this state and in this country. So we can't turn our back on those families that need the help the most. And secondly, I will have to say, I will disagree with Mr. Cooper. He did not help me get uh, $25 million for that bridge. It was not through RPC. It was my visit to Washington, D.C. that brought that money here and our putting in for the grant. And that's how we'll get the next $50 million also. So that's my second uh, accomplishment because we were losing lives in that traffic on that bridge. And it, well, that, I'll stop there. Thank you. Would you support a parish ordinance to have the expenses of the district courts accessible online? Certainly. Anything that's transparent I would, would welcome. Okay. Same question for Mr. Cooper. Yes. <laughs> That was an easy one. Okay. Um, with the suicide rate in our area as high as it is, do you see mental health care and its availability to our community as a priority? Yes, we do. Uh, 
We experience the highest rates of suicide in St. Tammany Parish. Uh, we've got organizations like STOPS and NAMI and other mental health organizations that are helping to uh, address these needs, address this uh, serious problem that we're having. Uh, Safe Haven is, that President Bristler mentioned, is an asset to our community and can help serve that. But we need the help from our medical community, our school communities, our, our physicians, and all mental health providers to help continue to address and bring awareness to uh, the serious problem of suicide in our community. Well, I, I have mentioned it a couple of times, so I'll expand, uh, expand that uh, discussion a bit. Uh, the suicide rate is tied directly to mental health, and I think that's where we need to focus as much as we can on trying to get the help to those people that have the issues as quickly as we can, the most efficient way we can, and with the best program for the best results. That's what we're doing at Safe Haven. We have the capability there to do as much as we can afford. We did join a lawsuit, and that is the opioid um, lawsuit. We're very hopeful there will be a settlement there, as there has been in many of the other states. That funding will be used directly to help the mental issue problem and the opioid um, addiction problem that most uh, suicides are from that that uh, area. So we continue to do that. We work on that every day. The um, agencies that have joined us, it's just been amazing. Every agency <laughs> we talk to, including the DA, the Sheriff, Veterans Administration, the faith-based community, all of them have come on board and are out there working with us. So we know that's the important way to do it. And it's been, we have gotten that word from, as I mentioned earlier, from, from um, the White House and their drugs are that we're doing it right and that we should continue doing that. And I can tell you, it was a, it was a very nerve wracking day when we had to say, okay, we're gonna buy that campus for $17 million and not knowing what we were gonna do. But we got a plan and it's working and it's going to be a model throughout this country. Um, so each candidate will get three minutes to, uh, to kind of wrap up and sum up their candidacies. And um, let's see, I guess uh, we'll start with Ms. Prister on this one. Um, First, um, certainly I want to thank the Chamber for allowing us to be here. I think we need more of these, that you can get information that you need when you make your decision. To me, making a decision for the leader of this wonderful community in which we live, I would consider three things. That is leadership, vision, and experience. I have those, I've shown those for over the years, and I, I have a vision for what St. Tammany should be in 40 years and 50 years from now, not next year or not two years from now, and we're fulfilling that vision as we go forward. I love this parish. I tell everybody how much I love this parish. I can't imagine living anyplace else. So the quality of life here is what we talk about when we go out to visit companies that might want to come here. We want them to see who we really are and what we really have. The amenities in this parish are amazing. I, meet, I started a parish president's group um, about five or six years ago because they had never met before, all of the parish presidents. So every time I, uh, we have a meeting, I hear from them, St. Tammany is doing it right. Tell me how to get there. Help us do what you're doing. So I know we're doing what we need to do to preserve our quality of life and to help grow jobs here so our children, our grandchildren can stay in this wonderful parish too and enjoy the same things that, that we've enjoyed for so many years. That's what I can, will continue to do as long as I can do it, even after my next four-year term. I will continue to do that. Thank you. And I want to thank the Chamber as well. Uh, for sponsoring uh, this forum, as well as the Times-Picayune Advocate. And it's great to see so many interested 
business owners, nonprofit uh, service organizations, elected officials. It's good to see you all out here and your interest in this. As you know, I'm a lifelong resident of St. Tammany Parish, and my family's been here for generations. I had the honor to serve as mayor of Covington for the past eight years. And during this time, I served with honesty and integrity, provided improvements to roads, bridges, drainage, parks and playgrounds, and added amenities for our citizens to enjoy, all without adding new taxes. I managed police, fire, public works, recreation, and administrative departments. and built a motivated workforce of public servants, which has contributed to the city being named a top workplace in the greater New Orleans area for the past five years. Most importantly, the city of Covington is thriving, is on sound financial footing, and revenue is increasing each year. I am proud of my record. However, like many of the citizens of St. Tammany, I am disappointed in the direction that our parish is going. With declining revenues over the past year, services are being cut and processes for permitting are taking an extraordinarily long time. Under the current administration, hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars were spent in a lawsuit with the district attorney's office over keeping a legal staff on the payroll at Coop Drive, a suit that the DA ultimately won. Hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars were spent on plans and specifications for a proposed performing arts center at I-12 in Pinnacle, which plans are now on the shelf because there's no money in the budget and there's a, no outcry from the public to build I can think of many ways this money could have been spent to better serve the needs of our citizens. And how can the parish president defend imposing an economic development sales tax in areas along the corridors of I-12 without a vote of the property owners and the businesses affected? A tax that was later rescinded due to an outcry from our local businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm running to be your next parish president to restore trust and confidence in parish government. I will bring a record of budgeting and spending taxpayer money wisely and efficiently. I have the educational background, executive management experience, and skill to set a new, fresh perspective as your first term parish president. Thank you.